So Mark Gurman decided to drop a massive report on literally every single Apple Silicon Mac we can expect to launch in the next few months. But today let's focus on the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini with M1X. So I can't lie, this does seem like some sort of answer to a report I read early in the day that I was going to report on, and that was Digitime saying that mini LED delays could push back the MacBook Pros as far as 2022. Now before you guys start panicking, thankfully Mark Gurman has confirmed that we can expect these in summer, so around WWDC, but I do want to say that even if there are delays with mini LED, I guarantee you guys Okay, maybe not guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that the MacBook Pros won't be pushed back till 2022 because the current Intel MacBook Pro, especially the 16 inch, is very, very old and Apple needs to release M2 before M1X. And so to summarize, I think Apple can't afford to push back these MacBook Pros and if they can't get mini LED ready by this summer, then they'll just scrap the feature and use LCD instead. And maybe that's why Mark Gurman also mentions nothing about mini LED in today's report. Apple has done this before, for example, the AirPods Max was supposed to have a customizable headband, but they cut the feature because they had to get the products out, and so Apple will pretty much sacrifice any feature possible to get their products out as soon as possible, so I can definitely see Apple cutting the mini LED feature for the time being. Now yes, I know some of you guys might be disappointed by the lack of mini LED, but you do have to remember that COVID is getting worse in Taiwan where they make these displays and also remember, you can't get a mini LED iPad Pro till mid-July, so clearly there are supply constraints, and so we just have to bear with that, and hopefully Apple can fix this, or maybe much like the iPad Pro range, we only see it on the bigger model. But obviously we shall keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully Apple does fix these issues before the launch of this M1X MacBook Pro. Anyways, with that clarification over, let's delve into the juicy details we have about the M1X SoC powering the MacBook Pro and the new Mac Mini. Right, so up until now, we've only had those benchmarks from CPU Monkey, which delve into the M1X having eight power cores and four efficiency cores, but apparently that's not entirely the case because German says that yes, we are getting eight power cores, but we're only getting two efficiency cores instead. Now this does make sense because obviously these M1X MacBook Pros are built for prosumers who care about performance and so obviously they're going to prioritize that over battery life unlike the M1 which has a balance between performance and battery life. And so while their endurance might be better than their Intel predecessors, I'm pretty sure the entry-level Macs like the M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro will continue to have the best battery life available on a Mac. So if battery life is important to you, then you should consider the entry-level Macs instead. In fact, I don't expect the 14-inch MacBook Pro to last as long as the base M1 MacBook Pro purely because it has a way more powerful SoC with less efficiency cores and obviously it has a very similar battery size and so yes again if you care about battery life Apple's gonna happily direct you towards those entry-level MacBooks. However that's pretty much the end of the somewhat bad news. Now let's delve into the GPU and this is pretty exciting stuff because Mark Gurman believes we could see a 16 core and a whopping 32 core GPU on the next MacBook Pro. That's actually incredible. That is insane for a laptop, and I'm assuming this will be integrated much like the M1 GPU, and that's not really a bad thing at all, because keeping everything integrated with the SoC pretty much helps the computer be as efficient as possible. And also do note, the integrated GPU on the M1 is pretty amazing as it is, especially for an entry-level Mac. So I can't even begin to imagine the benchmarks for a 32-core GPU in a MacBook Pro. However, alternatively, maybe Apple uses a different die for the GPU and uses a multi-chip package like Love to Dream suggested, and so that really gives them the best of both worlds. They have the power of a discrete GPU, but they can also retain the efficiency of an integrated GPU. Now, German does not say whether these options will be available on the 14-inch and the 16-inch, because I have a feeling that maybe the 16-core GPU is allocated to the 14-inch, and then you have to get the 16-inch for the 32-core GPU. I do think this is pretty likely because 
obviously the 16 inch has a much bigger thermal envelope to accommodate the beefier GPU. And so maybe because of the size constraints that come with the 14 inch, Apple just gives it the regular 16 core GPU. And also do remember the 16 inch has always been more powerful than the regular 13 inch four port MacBook Pro. And so to justify the higher price on the 16 inch, Apple giving us beefy internals on that model doesn't seem completely absurd. Anyways, let's now move on to another bit of great news and that is the RAM options. So you should be getting up to 64 gigs of memory on the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. So this should match their predecessors. And considering that unified memory works very efficiently on the M1 machines, 64 gigs of RAM with an M1X processor should be pretty much like butter. It should be very, very smooth and this should be able to handle any task. Now, finally, let's touch on ports. So German reiterates that we should see an SD card reader, a HDMI port and MagSafe back on the MacBook Pro. But of course, like I said, there is no mention of mini LED in this report. And so there is a chance that feature could be scrapped. Now in terms of release, like I said at the beginning, German makes it pretty clear that we should see these MacBook Pros this summer. So expect a WWDC announcement and then maybe they ship a month later, much like the iPad Pro and the iMac. This does make a ton of sense because John Prosser has hinted that Apple plans to release this new MacBook Pro alongside the education promo that happens every summer. So a lot of students would be interested in buying these machines. And obviously we did have recent reports suggesting that Apple Silicon processors would be ready by July and it should be in the next MacBook Pros. So obviously they're referring to the M1X and it should be available to buy a month after WWDC. Though do note, things can change because of COVID and the supply constraints, so do bear that in mind. But honestly, I have a pretty good feeling that we're gonna see these M1X MacBook Pros very, very soon. Now let's end the video on the M1X Mac Mini. Now this is a pretty simple machine to summarize. Basically all the options we're seeing with the MacBook Pro should be available with this Mac Mini. So a 10 core CPU, a 16 or 32 core GPU, and obviously up to 64 gigs of RAM. Oh, actually I nearly forgot this, but there's gonna be an improved neural engine with these M1X Macs. And basically what this means for us is that we're getting more Thunderbolt ports. And so yes, expect the MacBook Pro to have at least three because it might lose one because of the additional ports. However, the new M1X Mac Mini should have the same ports as the Intel Space Gray Mac Mini they currently sell. Now, Mark Gurman is not sure about the release date of this Mac Mini. He says it could be canceled or maybe delayed, but eventually Apple will update the Space Gray Mac Mini. Personally, since we did see references to a new Mac Mini alongside these new MacBook Pros, I do think there is a very good chance we could see this at WWDC too. Anyways, I'm gonna end it here, but let me know your thoughts on pretty much everything Mark Kerman revealed today. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the icon above about the Beat Studio Buds. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.